Hey friends, this is Trish with Crafting Cousins. Kay and I would like to thank you for stopping by and supporting our channel. In today's video, we have 20 easy and affordable Easter DIYs that are sure to make you want to start crafting for spring. So sit back, relax, and let's craft y'all. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using this unfinished wood bunny butt that I got from the Dollar Tree last year. It is about 12 inches wide and about 10 inches tall and actually pretty good quality. I'm going to use one of this set of words that says Happy Easter. This came in a package at Hobby Lobby. Mine got broken in my storage box because I bought them last year, but that's okay. We'll still make it work. I'm going to be using this scrap piece of orange fabric. It has white dots on it, and I think it originally came from Hobby Lobby. They usually stock it every year. I'm going to be using some of this faux fur that I got on a roll during Christmas time at Hobby Lobby. It's about four inches wide. I'm also going to be using the fur on this Christmas stocking. You can see I had cut it off for another project. I am embarrassed to even tell you what that was for, but it was for a costume at Christmas time for a tacky Christmas party, and I tucked it down in my boots. But now I don't need it, and I'm going to be using that fur at the top. And I'm going to be using some ribbon on this project. The first one is about an inch. It came from Hobby Lobby in the fall. The second one and the third one both came from Michael's. The last one is one and a half inches wide. And I'm also going to be using this one and a half inch wired ribbon that I got from Aldi's for $5. It is pink velvet. You also need some kind of jute twine. And I'm showing you this bag of carrots that came from the Dollar Tree, but I actually ended up using a smaller carrot from a package that I got at Hobby Lobby. Some green acrylic paint. This one is by Ceram Coat, and the color is lime sorbet. And of course, we need some crafting glue. I'm going to be using Mod Podge and my hot glue gun. First thing I need to do is remove these wooden pieces that they have stuck down onto the background. And when I tell you this was the hardest part of the entire project, it really was. I used my heat tool, I used a scraper, and you just wanna take your time really and pry up under there and it will release, it will come off. And here's a tip. If you buy it in the year you're going to use it, I always find it to be much easier to get the pieces separated. I don't know why that is. I guess the glue just has a lot more time to set up and it's just not as difficult when it's fresh. But if you take your time and do it right, it does come off pretty easily. I got in a hurry and so I ended up scraping up my hand pretty badly with a screwdriver. So don't do that, use something flat and just take the proper time to get the job done. Oh, and don't forget to label your feet on the bag so that you remember which one is the left and which one is the right. Once we have everything removed, I'm going in with a coat of Mod Podge, pretty thick on the top. I'm just going to cover the entire front of the piece and I am using the front that was already the front. And then I'm going to place down my fabric. We'll smooth that really well and let it set up just a few seconds and then we'll come back in with a coat of Mod Podge on the top. You want to make sure you keep it even and not too heavily coated and work on getting out all those air bubbles. Now for the stocking that I'm going to be using, I'm of course going to be cutting away the red part. And then I decided to take a seam ripper and come in and remove all of the seams on the white so I have as much surface area as possible to work with. I will just be using hot glue to attach the faux fur to the feet of the bunny. And I first started here at the top and I'm just going to put on about halfway. And then I had to take it back off. I realized you should start with the widest part of the foot, which is the toes. And that's okay, we'll just reheat that glue once we do the bottom. And you can see here, I'm starting over at the toes and I'm just going to apply just a little bit below the toes and kind of fill in with some glue. And then as I work my way to the bottom part, I'm just going to use that heated nozzle because this gun gets really hot to reheat that glue up and just add a little bit more so that I can smooth out everything onto the foot. We'll just cut that apart so we can begin working on the second foot. And we're just going to do the same thing. Start at the toes, fill in with glue, and smooth down the foot onto the fur. 
I really like the shorter fur for the feet. That was a lucky find when I was looking for something else. For the tail, I want it to be a lot fluffier, so I am using this longer um, four inch wide faux fur from the Christmas stash at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to cut a piece just a little bit larger than my circle. And once again, I am going to use hot glue and smooth it onto the wood and do uh, half of the circle at a time and then place it down onto the fur and smooth it down. You could also use Fabri-Tac glue if you would prefer. That will give it a little smoother finish, but it really doesn't matter because the fur is going to be so long. Once everything's down, you can see you can rough up that fur and make that bunny's tail really long and fluffy. Then to cut it out, I'm just going to cut just a small margin away from the edge of the wood just to make sure that my fur stays nice and long at those edges. I'm also going to use detail scissors, turn it onto the back, and you want to cut only the white backing. Don't cut the fur itself. Work your way carefully around and leave a little bit of a margin to the side. And you can see here after I have everything cut out that that leaves us with a very fluffy tail. If the fur sticks out too much on the sides, just trim that a little bit up with your scissors. For the feet, it's very easy to trim around, but again, I am going to leave a small margin on the side. And I used a combination of these big scissors and those detail scissors to get it just like I want it. But the fur is not really long, so you don't have to worry so bad about just cutting the backing. Now I didn't have a pattern or anything to use for the bottom of the bunny's foot, but I just took an index card and I just kind of folded it until I got it at the right width, which is about one and a half inches wide for the top part. And then I just made a pattern to go down the middle of his foot. And for the three toes, they're all slightly different. And I'm just going to trace them onto the back of the velvet ribbon. And that's what I used to make mine. You could also use felt or whatever you have in your stash. And so I just make two sets and I'm going to go in and cut those out with my scissors. And then of course, I'm just going to use hot glue to attach them down to the bunny's feet. Now that our Mod Podge is dry, I'm going to go in with just my scissors and a Zacto knife. And I'm just going to trim around all of the edges. And I almost forgot to paint the Happy Easter, but I'm going to attach it down to some painter's tape so that it stays in place and give it two good coats of this acrylic paint in the color Lime Sorbet. When I place back on my feet, I'm going to place it just a little lower than it was on the original piece. I'm going to move it down as much as I can, actually. And I'll just draw a line on the back with my pencil to indicate where I don't want to put glue. And then I'm just going to use hot glue and place it at the same angle that it was originally. And for the left foot, exact same thing. Just make sure it kind of measures up with the one on the right. And for his fluffy bunny tail, same thing. I'm going to move it up as much as I can without having instability. So about halfway here on the back, I will mark it with my pencil where not to put glue and then we'll place everything down. To make a hanger for the piece, I'm just going to use some jute twine and I'm making mine a little longer than the original hanger. I'm going to use hot glue to attach it and also a little bit of ribbon to put on top of it to make sure it stays in place and also looks nice. But I want to dress it up with these two green beads. I'm just going to tie a knot in the center of my jute twine and then I will put a bead on to the right and left and tie more knots to the right and left of those beads so that they stay in place when we hang it on the wall. We're going to make a messy bow for this piece. I'm going to start out with the one and a half inch carrot ribbon and I'm going to cut those pieces, two of them, at six inches. For the second two ribbons, I'm going to cut them at about five and a half inches each. Then once I have everything cut, we'll just place it on an X, starting with the wider ribbon at the bottom, working towards our thinner ribbon. I'll use some jute twine to tie it in the middle. I'll wrap it several times around and secure it in the back with knots. And you could also secure that with a little drop of glue to make sure it stays in place. Now you want to fluff it up a little bit, cut off those ends so that they're even from the top and the bottom. You want the ones on the bottom to be longer than the ones on the top. I cut the first two at an angle and for the wider ribbon, I'm going to dovetail it by folding it in the middle and cutting from the fold diagonally to the wire. And this is the carrots I ended up using that I got from a Hobby Lobby. They're quite a bit smaller. 
I'm just going to use hot glue and secure the bow to the left hand side of the piece. And of course, I'm going to place that carrot right in the middle to dress up the bow further. The last thing we need to do is place on the Happy Easter words. They're kind of fine, so I'm going to use wood glue and a skewer to apply the glue onto the back, and then I'm going to place it at an angle on the right-hand side, making sure that I place back in the ER that was broken. You couldn't even tell it when I finished. And with that, the project is complete. I love it, y'all. One of my favorites this season. And I know what you're thinking. Why is the bunny orange? Well, that's his trousers. He's wearing shorts. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this pattern that I sketched out, scanned in, blew up, printed, cut out, and taped together. I will put a link to the PDF where I blew it up in the description box below if you would like to have a copy to use for your project some white duck cloth. You could also use canvas, drop cloth, or even burlap. Some acrylic paint in white, black, pink, orange, and yellow, and two black permanent markers, a regular jot marker and a micro tip brush marker, both from the Dollar Tree. Some ribbon of choice. I'm gonna be making a messy bow, so I pulled pretty much everything I could find in my closet that looked like spring some twine, some bags for stuffing, some carbon paper, or you could use the pencil method where you scribble on the back and use it to trace, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. The first thing we're going to do is outline our pattern on our fabric. Now I only had a scrap piece of fabric so I kind of had to turn my pattern at an angle but it worked out fine. I didn't want to have to go to town and buy more. I wanted to be able to use what I had. I just lay my pattern onto my fabric making sure that it is doubled. Then I trace around it with a pencil and I cut it out putting my hand on it and cutting both pieces at once. Once we get our pattern cut out, I am going to take the bottom and I put it to the side. Then I take the top part and I am going to completely paint it using my yellow acrylic paint. Now, when you're doing these pieces that you're going to hang outside, I'm gonna be putting this on my front door, it's better to use acrylic paint because it holds up better in the weather. Chalk paint has a tendency to drip and to wear off if you put it outside and it gets wet. I gave this one really good coat of my paint and then I set it aside to dry. Once that paint was dry, I'm going to take my pattern and a piece of my carbon paper. I line it up and then you're just going to trace around your lines and that's going to transfer it onto your project. Now, I've had this carbon paper for probably five years. I got it at Office Depot and y'all, a little bit goes a long way. You can use it over and over. But if you don't have carbon paper, you can still transfer your lines. Just flip over your pattern, scribble on the back with your pencil, lay it down and transfer or trace over the lines and it's gonna transfer. Once I lifted it, I just went in and kind of filled everything in with my pencil so I could see it well. And then for the eyes, I grabbed my jot permanent marker and outlined them. Now, you don't have to do this. I like having that outline because it just kind of gives me those edges and I don't have to worry about how it's going to look. I had thought about filling in my eyes with my permanent marker. If you've been around a while, you know that I normally prefer to do that because it gives me, um, you know, more control. But I didn't like how it was filling in, so I just grabbed my black acrylic paint and filled in my eyes. Once I got those painted in, I'm going to paint my little feet and my little beak using my orange acrylic paint. Now, I think this one was called pumpkin cream or something, but you can really use any color orange that you want. I gave it one good coat on all three of those little pieces, and then I set it aside to dry. 
Once my paint was dry, I'm gonna come back and I'm using one of those fine tip brush markers. I get these at the Dollar Tree. Y'all, these things are wonderful. Anytime I see them, I get all of them that they have because they don't always have them. I'm gonna go around and outline my feet and my beak. And then I decided to give my edges just a little bit of personality. And I'm doing the dots and the dashes. I thought this was really cute. Now you could do this, you could do squiggly lines. You don't have to do anything at all. It's completely up to you, it's your piece. For the inside of my eyes, I'm going to use one of those round sponge brushes like you get from the Dollar Tree. I just dipped it into my white paint and then tapped it into the eye. I gave it a little bit more personality by using a small brush and doing some little dashes and some little dots. And then I decided to kind of highlight the feet and the beak as well. I'm just using that small brush and making little lines in different places. There really was no rhyme or reason. You do it however you like. I want to give my chick some rosy cheeks, so I use another one of those round sponge brushes and some pink paint and give her some rosy cheeks. Now I'm going to make a messy bow for my chick. So I grabbed just several different ribbons that I had in my closet, anything that had kind of a spring look to it. And I cut two pieces of each one about eight inches long. Then you're just going to stack them up in an X pattern. And it really doesn't matter. I kind of try to do mine the biggest to the smallest, but you do it however you like. Once I got them stacked up, I pick it up, I use some twine and wrap around the center about three times, tie into a double knot and trim it off. Then I'm just going to trim the end of my ribbon. For the thicker pieces, I like to cut it into a dovetail and then for the smaller ones, I just kind of cut it at an angle. I do make the ones on top shorter and I know this probably looks like waste, but it's just easier for me to do it this way. And then you're just gonna fluff it up and you have a bow. Now we're going to join our two pieces together. I put the bottom down and I line up the top on it and then I just take my hot glue gun and we're going to go around those edges and put down a strip of glue and then press it down onto it. Now your bottom's going to probably be a little bit bigger than your top because the paint does make the top shrink a little bit. What I do is just line up my edges. It does make it a little wrinkled on the back, but once you stuff it, this is gonna pull out and you're not even gonna be able to tell it. Now, I go most of the way around my little chick here, but I do leave the bottom open so that we can stuff it. Now I'm gonna take my garbage bags or my grocery bags that I save for this, and I'm just going to stuff them into the middle of it. Now, I normally don't stuff it as much as I did this one. I wanted this one to be a little puffier. You do as much as you like. I normally like it to just be a little bit 3D. Then you're going to close up your hole using your glue gun and your hot glue. Just be careful not to burn yourself. Line everything up and close it up well. To add a hanger, I'm gonna take a piece of twine. I use a darning needle and thread it through. Then you're just going to pull it through the center on the back and then pull one end all the way through, tie it into a knot, leaving a loop, trim it off, and you have a hanger. We're gonna attach our bow at the top using our hot glue. And once we get our bow on, our project is complete. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using these two and a quarter inch blocks that I got from the Dollar Tree. Some wooden letters from the Dollar Tree. They are about one and a half inches tall. They come in a pack of 26 for a dollar 25. Some Waverly chalk paint in the color ivory. Some plaid chalk paint in the color vintage Victorian. This package of moss bunnies, they have three in the package. They came from the Dollar Tree. And after this project, I was really wishing I had bought at least two packages of them. 
Some ribbon roses that I got from Walmart. I also used one of the single ones from a different package. They're made by Offray. Some green mesh ribbon from the Dollar Tree. Really unique, first time I've seen this. And finally, my hot glue gun. So the first thing I'm going to do is give my wooden blocks a really good coat of the ivory chalk paint by Waverly. I ended up painting just five of the sides. I didn't paint the bottom because it's always going to be turned down. Actually, I didn't even take off the sticker. That gave it more of a store-bought look, honestly. Then for my wooden letters, I'm going to place them onto some painter's tape so that I can easily hold on to them. And then I'm just going to give them about one and a half coats of this pink chalk paint. And I made sure that I got all of the edges all around the letters. And I'm going to use my precision tip hot glue gun to place glue onto the back of all the letters and place them down onto what is the front of my blocks. Because remember, I didn't paint one of the sides, so it's going to be turned down. So I'm centering them from top to bottom and right to left. And then I come and I'm going to cut this green mesh. I'm not sure what this stuff is, y'all, but it's really cool. But I cut three pieces that were five inches long. Then I'm just going to fold it in the middle and kind of pinch it, turn it at an angle. Then I'll glue it down to the center middle of the top of my pieces. And don't forget to wear your finger protectors because that glue will seep out from all of those holes and you don't want to get burned. And once I've got that in place, I'm just going to use hot glue on the bottom of my little moss bunnies. I'm going to start with this tall bunny and make it the middle. So you want to make sure you put it on top of the O. And then I'm just going to do the same thing for the next two pieces of my mesh ribbon. Glue them onto the top of the boxes. And then I do pay attention how I want my bunnies to be placed because I decided I would place the one on the end facing inward and the one on the left also facing towards the middle of the O. And then I'm going to get out my little ribbon roses from Walmart and I'm just going to glue them kind of center towards the bottom right there in the middle of where that grass is. That just gives it a cute, elegant touch, and they do have other colors. Because I know all of y'all don't like pink as much as Trisha and I do. And then my plan was to turn the O into like a wreath and place these little tiny roses all the way around. But I thought it kind of overwhelmed the piece because it's not very big. So I placed one at the center of the bottom. And then I get out my little flat back eggs that I got recently at Hobby Lobby. And I'm going to place that moss green egg right there in the middle of the O to add just a little something extra. And with that, this project is complete. It's really simple and it would look great on a tear tray cause it's kind of small, but I love it y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use these chunky letters that I got at Walmart for $1.47 each. You can get something similar at any craft store. This chunky wooden egg from Dollar Tree, some tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree, Waverly chalk paint in truffle and hazelnut, some pictures of some carved wooden letters. We'll use these as a pattern and my glue gun and some glue sticks. You notice that I got the glue gun that does not have a precision tip. When I found this piece at Grandin Road, I fell in love with it. Now the price is out of my budget, but I do understand why it's priced this way. They are using carved wooden letters. Now, I can't carve wooden letters, but I think we can use hot glue and we can get something that's gonna be pretty close to the same look. Let's see how I did. The first thing I did was take all of the tags and stuff off my letters, and then I went to the computer and I printed out the letters and the egg from the original piece. I wanted to use this to get my dimensions and get an idea of the pattern that I needed for my pieces. I'm going to use a piece of carbon paper and lay these on top of my letters and just trace over it. Now I'm not going to have the exact 
same pattern because my letters are shaped differently. So you see that I end up doing some of this freehanded and then I trace some of it. It really doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be a perfect replica. You just want to give it that carved wood look. So we're going to go over each one of our pieces and we'll do a combination of tracing these on and then doing some freehand work to get these on here. Now if you are comfortable with it, you could totally do freehand and come up with a cool pattern that really has nothing to do with the one that was on these. I was just wanting to get as close to the look from the Grandin Road piece as possible. So we're going to finish these up. And then once we get our pattern on, we're going to take our glue gun with our hot glue and we're just going to flood in the outline of this. Now I did try to get this smooth. It is a little bit tricky and it gets tiring on your hand, but it's not hard to do. You just have to have a little patience and just keep going along and flooding it in. And then once you get all of your pieces filled in with your hot glue, we're going to put them aside and let them dry. I let mine dry for about an hour while I ate lunch. I just wanted to make sure that it was good and set before I moved on. Now that our glue is dry, we're going to flip our letters over and we are going to glue a tumbling tower block on the base of each one. My letters aren't chunky enough to stand up on their own. Now I did find some at Hobby Lobby that were, but they were $3.99 each and I didn't want to pay that price for them. So using these tumbling tower blocks fixes that. Once we get our tumbling tower blocks glued to the bottom, we are going to use our truffle chalk paint and we're going to paint each piece of this. I did make sure that I got the front, the back, all the sides in those little nooks and crannies. I feel like this truffle paint is going to give us that dark wood look that the original has. And I have to say that once it dried, I was pretty happy. Now that our truffle paint is dry, we are going to use some of our hazelnut chalk paint and a chippy brush, and we're just going to lightly go over each one of our pieces. Now you do this to your taste. I didn't do it too heavy. I just wanted to make sure that I highlighted all the detail work that we put in, kind of give it a distressed look and make it look more like our original inspiration. Once you get your distressed paint on there to your liking, this project will be complete. Hey y'all, this is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using two 10 inch wood rounds that I got from Hobby Lobby. They come in like a package of six. This is not the thickest ones that they sell. I'm going to be using several wooden beads. I got mine at Binge, but they sell them everywhere. They are about three quarters inch in diameter. I'm also going to be using four of these wooden snowmen. They came in a package at Hobby Lobby at Christmas. I'm going to be using some Waverly chalk paint in the colors Celery and Ivory and several glues to include E6000, school glue, and my hot glue gun. The first thing I'm going to do is place down a row of beads all the way around the outside edge of one of my 10 inch wood rounds. I just made sure they were just a little bit inset, not too much, all the way around and I made sure the holes were up each time so that I'm not going to have holes on the side of my piece when I'm done. And because I'm using Gorilla Glue Sticks, I'm not really worried about the beads coming up. And for the last bead, it was just a little too fat, so I took my utility knife and I cut off the sides of it, just whittled it down, and then it fit in there perfectly and, and you couldn't even tell where it was. I'm going to place my second wood round on top. I'm going to use E6000 to attach the beads because I knew the hot glue would dry out too fast, but I did leave several beads without glue and used hot glue on those so we can get that fast hold and long-term hold. Then we just place on our top piece and we're going to make sure this dries really well before we do anything else to it. Now I'm going to place on what will be the feet for our piece. I'm going to use those wooden snowmen, a little E6000, and some hot glue in the middle. 
but I do let it dry for several hours. You guys have probably seen me use the technique where you use glue to distress a piece and it just makes the paint peel away. Well, that's what I'm going to do on this piece, but I'm doing it in the reverse. So the first thing I'm going to do is give it a coat of the ivory chalk paint. So we're gonna have the dark color on top, the light color on the bottom. So I painted the top, the bottom, the sides, and all of the feet. And then I come in with my glue and you want to spread it kind of thick. I'm starting here on the bottom so I can practice. And I'm going to get a good coat on there. Then I come in with the green and just place it right on top. And then we come in with our heat gun and we're going to dry it. And I'm going to speed it up so hopefully you can see how it cracked. When I do the top, I kind of change my technique just a little bit, but not too much. It doesn't work as well as if you put the dark color on the bottom and the light color on the top, or at least I did not find that to be so. But in the end, I was really happy with the results and the way it turned out. It looks like it's kind of chippy and little weathered. Here I am doing that top coat. And this time I only did half or a third and came back and I used the heat gun to make it crackle again. And this did work pretty well. Risers are great for so many uses in home decor. You can place on things in the bathroom. You can place on your items that you make seasonally. You can use it pretty much like a tiered tray. This is Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these faux moss bunnies that I got from the Dollar Tree in the $3 section. I'm going to be using him pretty much like he is. I'm going to take off this bow. And for this project, I'm going to be using some kind of stand. I'm using the one I made in the previous project. I'm going to be using some wooden tower blocks that I got from the Dollar Tree. A scrap piece of one of these planks that I got in a package at the Dollar Tree. One of these floral rings, also from the Dollar Tree. Some green moss. They do sell it occasionally at the Dollar Tree, but mine came from Hobby Lobby. Then I'm going to be using about seven bunches of these tulips that are on sale at Michael's for $2 a bunch. I'm also going to use my hot glue gun and my Grace Monroe Home Glue Pot. You need some kind of pedestal for this project. I'm, of course, going to use the riser that I made, and I'm going to take that piece of floral foam, put some glue on the back of it, and then place it down as centered as possible onto my riser. And because I have that hole in the middle and I don't need it for florals, I'm going to use my tumbling tower blocks, and I place down three with some hot glue, you don't have to be really careful, and then place three across on top of that, and I think I ended up with five rows to kind of even it up to the height that I need. And once I get them in place, I take this scrap piece of wood that I have from one of those Dollar Tree pieces, and I'm going to glue it on top as well, and that makes it the perfect platform to place on my bunny later. Now I'm going to prep my florals. I'm going to push the leaf toward the bloom, and then I'm going to cut off the stems about three inches or so, just a little longer than the width of that ring. I love using my glue pot when I work with florals, and I'm just going to dip it in, and you just kind of twist it and then bring it over to your piece. I'm applying first some pink ones. I'm alternating the colors, and then I'm going to place them about two inches apart all the way around the ring, right in the center of the depth of that ring. I hope that makes sense, y'all. Then I come in with some yellow ones, and I'm going to place them in between all of my pink ones. And that's kind of how I work my way around the circle. So I want the pink colors to be the predominant color. So once I finish a row of the yellow ones, I'm going to come back in and place a few more pink ones sporadically, kind of on top of the florals that we've already done, but I'll just work my way around. You just keep kind of filling in till you get it like you want it, honestly. And I even bring those florals up onto the top of the ring, but I keep it kind of to the side a little bit, but I do fill in the top as well. 
And now I'm coming in with some moss. And y'all, I forgot to film this part, but I have some moss and I took hot glue and I just glued it around the extra part of the ring so that we could hide it. And it just looked a little more put together, a little more formal. And now I'm going to take some of this eucalyptus that I got from Timu and I cut it in half and kind of trim it up because it was really long. So in half worked pretty well for this piece. And I'm going to go in and just place it into the piece anywhere I had a hole. I thought a little accent of greenery would help. You can use whatever greenery you have in your stash. That just fills in the last of the holes. And then I came in with the moss one more time and filled in any holes at the top that needed to be covered. And the last thing to do is secure our bunny to the platform. And I'm going to leave my bunny plain. I don't want a ribbon on him, but if you would like a ribbon or a flower on your bunny, feel free to accent him. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use the small tulips that you get from Michaels for $1.99. I'm going to be using five stems of these, and they did come in orange and yellow, and I want it all orange, but I will show you how I went about dyeing these. We're going to use some homemade alcohol ink in red. I did a video showing how easy and inexpensive it was to make alcohol ink. I will link that down below. Some greenery. I got some of this from the Dollar Tree and a couple of the stems from Michaels. Some green burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree. I only used one roll and some floral wire. When you get these little tulips from Michaels, they come with two different colors on them. I didn't want the yellow ones. I wanted them to be all orange. And the best way to fix that was to dye them. Now I'm using alcohol ink to dye these with because it dries really fast. All you have to do is spray it on there and give it a couple of minutes and it's completely dry. When I used my red alcohol ink on this, it turned it a beautiful shade of orange. It's not exactly the same shade as what was already on there, but I actually like that. I think it gives it some depth and I really love it. Now it is very messy. So honestly, I took them all outside and sprayed them except this one stem and I only did it so I could show y'all how it worked. Now that we have all of our tulips this pretty orange color, we are going to start joining them together and forming our carrot. I cut all of my stems off and you get like two or three tulips on each stem. And then I took three of the stems and I formed them into like a point. This is going to be the bottom part of our carrot. I wrapped them with some floral wire and then I took my ribbon and I wrapped that around there as well. Now this ribbon is going to give you a basis for your wreath and I really liked how it held everything together. I didn't cut it off of my roll yet because I wasn't sure how much I was going to need and it was easier to just leave it on there. So once you get your point, all you're going to do is just keep building this up. I laid it down so I could see how it looked. And then as I went up, I would always add a couple more stems to it so that it would gradually get bigger as it got to the top. I just keep wrapping my ribbon around my stems and then I secure that with my floral wire. And this truly holds everything in place. You don't have to worry about them falling out. Now, when I saw that I had a hole, I would just kind of adjust things, pull them around until I liked how it looked. We all know that carrots aren't perfect, so this doesn't have to be perfect. You just want it to be bigger at the top, smaller at the bottom, and when they're all hanging down, it's going to look like a carrot. When I got to the top, I didn't wrap my ribbon around. I just used some floral wire to secure everything together. Then I trimmed those stems so they were about the same length. Now I'm going to take my bundle of greenery, I kind of arranged it but not really, and I'm going to wrap that with some wire and put it at the top. Then I take my ribbon and I start wrapping around to secure these two together. I made sure that I wrapped it, I don't know, probably three or four times. Then I took a piece of it and looped it up. 
and I'm gonna hold it at the base and use another piece of floral wire to secure everything together. I twisted it several times so that it would be tight and nothing would fall out. And that nice little loop we made is how we're going to hang our wreath. Now we're just going to trim that wire and I'll cut off my ribbon. Then we're gonna flip it over and I'm gonna take the rest of the ribbon that was on that roll and make a bow right there between the greenery and the tulips. This is going to hide that seam and it gives it a decorative touch. We're gonna fluff everything together. Then I'll just trim off my ribbon, dovetail the ends, and with that, this project will be finished. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using these two candlesticks that are metal. I got them at a thrift store in Las Cruces, New Mexico called Binge. They both came in one package and cost $2. I will be using two styrofoam balls. These are about three inches in diameter. Four inches would have been better, but I'm using what I have on hand. These were very cheap after Christmas at Hobby Lobby. I'm using some green moss. I couldn't find mine from the Dollar Tree and they didn't have any locally, but they do sell green moss. I'm going to be using a few of these little carrots. They're real tiny. They came in a package at Hobby Lobby. I'm also going to be using one flower, one little pink ranunculus. I'm going to be using wired ribbon in various widths in shades of blue and pink and black and white harlequin. You will need some floral pins. I got mine at Hobby Lobby, but they sell them also at Walmart. You will also need some kind of fiber fill. I got mine at Christmas and it was called Snow, but it's the same thing. You could also use pillow stuffing. I also use some scrap foam board. You don't need very much. And finally, you need lots of glue. I'm going to be using actually hot glue and my Fabri-Tac. I'm going to use the Fabri-Tac and spread it around the styrofoam balls and just completely cover it with the moss. And yes, you can buy these already done at many of the craft stores, but they're about $5 a piece. And so I think that's just a ridiculous price. I just made my own. And you may notice at the bottom, I knew that part was going to be sticking in my candle holder. So I didn't bother to cover actually the entire thing. I just left a white spot at the bottom. And once you're finished, you want to go in and give it a haircut, kind of trim off all that excess that's just sticking out. For the bunny ears, I just cut a piece of paper that was four and a half inches long by one and a half inches wide, and then I folded it in the middle and just rounded off the top. These are supposed to be very simple ears because this is a dupe of a Mackenzie Childs item that I saw a couple of years ago. And the next thing I'm going to do is just trace out four of those ears on my foam board and cut it out with a utility knife. And I'm going to cut pieces of this three inch wide Harlequin print ribbon that will go on the front of the ears and be able to wrap around. I remove all of those wires on the side. And I'm also going to trace out the bunny ears on the back of my ribbon so that I can cut out exact pieces that will go on the back of the ears later to cover up any mistakes that we make. And to make my job easy, I'm going to use a precision tip glue gun and place the glue around the outside edge of the foam board all the way around and just smooth down the ribbon as much as I can and making it look neat and nice. But you want to leave open the bottom part because we're going to stuff these ears. And I'm just going to use a skewer to help me take small pieces and shove it down into that pocket. And it does give the ears a 3D look and they look more professional. They look like something you bought in town. Here's a comparison. I don't know if you can tell the difference, but I did make it larger so you can see one stuffed and one not stuffed. Once everything is stuffed, I kind of trim up the bottom and I fold it up and secure it with hot glue. And by the way, I didn't put stuffing all the way down to the bottom. I left a good inch from the bottom with no stuffing because we're going to be placing it into the back of our bunny head. 
And to do that, I'm going to use floral pins. I'm going to use a little glue on the front part of the ears, also inside the pen and on the outside to make sure everything is secure and just push it down into the ball. You can put it as low as you want or you can put it up high. And the next thing you want to do is take those pieces you cut for the back, use some glue and secure it down. And that takes care of all the mess in the back. It looks nice and neat. I'm just going to use hot glue and attach the head right down to my candlestick. Then I'm going to make a very simple bow using my Easy Bow Maker. I start out with about three and a half inch loops on each side and about four and a half inch tails. And then I just make each ribbon after that a little bit smaller. We'll secure it with some floral wire, and then we'll use that wire to wire in the floral pin at the back, securing it with hot glue as well, so that we can place it right at the base of our bunny. And I did use a little more hot glue to make sure it was secure, and then I'm going in and I'm going to place a rose right between the two ears, because this is kind of like our girl bunny. And then I also come in, paint a couple of those carrots, because they were a little bit too bright in the pumpkin Waverly chalk paint, and then I'm going to place one of those right in the middle of the bow and with that our project is complete. For my boy bunny I want him to have a bow tie and I'm going to make a messy bow by cutting five inch pieces of these three different ribbons. We'll just cinch it in the middle with some floral wire, wire in one of our floral pins so that we can stick it into the bunny and then we'll just place it right in the center of the bottom, glue another carrot in the middle and with that our boy bunny is complete. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use a scrap piece of two by six that I took from our discard pile from where my husband has been working on the dock. Now you can use any old wood or you could even use an old sign. Some wording that I sketched out onto a piece of paper and then went over with a marker so that I could scan it in. And I'll put a link down below if you would like to have a copy of it to use for your project some permanent markers. I have a regular jot marker and a fine tip marker. Both of these came from Dollar Tree. A pencil, some white chalk paint. I'm using Waverly, but you can make your own chalk paint. Our friend Deidre has a wonderful recipe over on her channel. Before I paint my wood, I'm going to take my sanding block and just go over it really well. This is going to knock off anything that might have got on it from being outside in the discard pile. And I'm also going to go over my edges and just kind of round them off and sand them down. To me, this gives it more of a worn look and makes it look like it's been outside rather than a piece of new wood that was just cut down. Now I'm going to take my chalk paint and give this a pretty heavy coat, but I am still kind of doing a distressed painting. You see that I'm not going over those edges. I'm leaving those where it looks like it's worn off of it. I will do the front, the back, the sides, making sure that everything's covered, and then I'll set it aside and let it completely dry. Now that our paint is dry, I'm going to come back in with a pencil and do a little more distressing. I love using this method. I think that it just gives it that old look and it looks like it was meant to be, like it was there from years of wear. All I do is take my pencil, run it over the edges, and then smooth it in with my finger. Now this is messy with your fingers, but it is such a pretty effect. To add my wording to my sign, I'm going to use the tracing method. Now, I know our friend Deidre shows you guys how you can use Mod Podge to be able to put graphics on the signs, but this is the way that Kay and I like to be able to show our friends that they can do projects even if they don't have a cutting machine. This is a method we all learned in grade school. All you do is take your wording, scribble on the back of it with a pencil, 
put it on your project and then trace over it. This is going to transfer the lines to your project and you'll be able to see them to fill them in. Now you could also freehand this. If you have carbon paper, you can use that instead of using a pencil, but it is a great way of being able to do projects and not worrying about if it's going to look right just freehanding it. Once I get my words transferred over to my project, I like to use a permanent marker to fill them in. I love these jot markers from Dollar Tree. They have such a good flow and I'm liking this fine tip brush marker that I got from there as well. Now you can use these, a paint pen or a paint and brush, but however you do it, once you get your words on, this project's complete. Hey y'all, it's Kay. Let's grab a few materials and we'll do a little happy Easter crafting. I have a lot of things I want to make this year, so I'm getting started early. I'm going to be using, first of all, this 10 inch wood round. I got it at Hobby Lobby in a package of three and it is sort of thick. One of these wooden cutouts that says Happy Easter came from Hobby Lobby on sale. Some wooden beads that I got at the Dollar Tree. Sometimes you just want to craft and you don't want to paint all those beads, so I thought this was a good value. This pink fabric bunny that I got at the Dollar Tree just recently, they are felt on the back and fabric on the front, so I got the pink and I also got the lavender. Some ribbons, some wired, some not. The one in the middle with the truck on it came from Hobby Lobby and it is the inspiration for the piece. This ribbon that came from the Dollar Tree, it's actually a nice hot pink gingham and it matches perfectly with the other ribbon. Some Waverly chalk paint in the color white and some folk art chalk paint in the color vintage, which is my favorite pink chalk paint, by the way. I'm also going to be using some acrylic paint. This color is called Soft Lavender. And finally, I'm going to be using some jute twine and you'll need some kind of glue. I'm using my hot glue gun. So the first thing I did was take my ruler and draw a line across the middle of my board, not exactly halfway, just somewhere in between. And I'm going to paint the top part in my white Waverly chalk paint, and then I'll paint the bottom in the pink paint. I'm going to also paint the edges. Then I'm going to take the word Happy Easter and place it on some painter's tape so that I can easily hold on to it. I'll use a stiff, small brush and paint in the light lavender paint. This took a little bit of doing and it did take several coats being sure to get around all of those tiny edges and nooks. Now I'm going to take this small piece of ribbon that I had in my stash and I'm just going to attach it right across the middle to break up the two colors. This is just a polka dotted pink ribbon. Now I'm going to place on my fabric bunnies. I'm going to place on the lavender one kind of up a little bit and the pink one towards the middle of the bottom. And I'm gonna add a small rose kind of to the top of my pink bunny between the two ears, just to make it a little more girly. And now I'm using a little wood glue on the back of my wooden Happy Easter. And then I also used hot glue and attach it down towards the top on the white. Now I'm going to make our bow to go on the piece. I'm cutting four inch pieces of all of my ribbons. Some of it is two and a half inches wide. Then the next one is like two and a quarter inches wide. They're just various widths. And because they are so wide, I'm going to use the technique where you make bow ties out of them by folding them in half, pinching them in the middle, and then sliding them next to each other as I attach them on top of each other. And I will also use twine in between each time tying the pieces together. And yes, this process does take a little bit longer than if I stacked them all on an X and then did one big tie, but it also makes for a fuller bow and a more interesting bow. And when you finally get everything all stacked and tied together, you want to go back and adjust your ends. You'll need to recut some of them, especially my pink ones because they weren't pre-measured. I was going to cover the middle with that thin hot pink ribbon, but it didn't work out exactly. It was a little too thin, so I came back with that gingham ribbon and covered up the center, just tied it really tightly on the back and made sure that I added some glue to reinforce everything. 
I chose five beads from this package. I'm going to use three in the pink and two in the off-white. Yes, it probably would be better if they were lilac covered, but I decided to have a little more contrast. I cut a piece of my twine, folded it in half, tied a knot at the bottom, and then I'm pulling down my beads onto the double twine. I just use my small screwdriver and I can push everything down through the beads and pull it up. And when I get to the end, I'm going to add some glue at the top to make sure that bead doesn't slide off. And then at the bottom, I will go in and attach the tail of my piece to the wood on the back. And that's the way I'm going to hang it. And the last thing we have to do is attach our messy bow to the top, give it a little fluff, and with that, our piece is complete. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to be using these wood shims that I got in a bag at Goodwill Outlet. When I first saw it, I wasn't sure what they were, but when I opened it up, I found these shims. Now the good thing about this is if you don't find them at your thrift store, you can get them at any hardware store and even at Walmart. Some orange paint, I'm going to be using the Waverly paint in pumpkin. Some greenery from the Dollar Tree some super glue wood glue, a scrap piece of scrapbook paper, some ink and a dauber, a pencil and a permanent marker, some twine and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I'm going to be using six of my wood shims so I took out six of the best ones and I'm going to be painting them with my Waverly chalk paint in pumpkin. Now I do paint the front, the back, and the sides. You don't really have to because you won't see one side of two or either side of the middle one but since I wasn't sure if they were going to fit together perfectly I did decide to go ahead and paint all of mine and then we're going to set them aside to dry. While our shims are drying, I'm going to take my scrapbook paper and I rip off a strip. I didn't measure it, I just tore it off. Then I use some scissors to cut it down into the shape of a tag. Now I'm going to use my ink and my dauber to go around the edges. I like how it just kind of finishes them off. Then I'm going to open up my scissors and I go over those edges and just rough them up. This just kind of puffs it out and gives it a better look in my opinion. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. To make a hole in my tag, I'm just going to use my awl to punch it through. You can use a paper punch, I just didn't want to have to go find mine. Now I'm going to use a pencil to sketch out bunny bait. You don't have to do this, you can just take your marker and do it. I do it so that I get my dimensions right, but you can totally freehand this. Now we have this cute little tag. I'm going to take some twine, cut it off, then I just fold it in half, push it through the hole, and then put the ends through the loop and pull. This gives me a cute little tag. Now we can put our carrots together. I'm going to put a little bit of wood glue right down the center, then I add a little bit of hot glue to hold it until that wood glue sets. Now we will add another one on top of that and we have a cute little carrot. We'll do the same thing for the remaining pieces, wood glue and hot glue, add a wood shim, add a little more wood glue and hot glue, and then add your third wood shim and you have another carrot. For the greenery for our carrots, I'm just using this piece that I got from the Dollar Tree. I thought it looked like the greenery on a carrot. And I'm using my awl and punching a hole into the top of the middle shim. I actually end up doing four holes, one for each piece of the greenery that I cut off. Now, if you don't have an awl, you can get these from Hobby Lobby for like $2.50 and these things are wonderful. Once I got my holes in there, I just put a little bit of hot glue and then pushed the greenery down. And because I wasn't sure if it would stay, I took a little piece of twine and used some hot glue to wrap around the base. I thought this ended up looking really cute and it gave it a lot of stability. Now we're gonna do the exact same thing for our second carrot. We'll punch our four holes, put some hot glue, stick in our greenery in each one of our little holes, and then use a little bit of twine right around the base 
just to secure it and give it some stability. It actually ends up looking like a little bit of dirt on top of your carrot. Now we'll take our tag and tie a knot into the twine, leaving a loop. Then I'm just going to pull it over the top of the greenery down to the base. And I'll use a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place. And with that, this project is complete. y'all this is Kay. For this project I'm going to be using this solid wood frame that I got at the thrift store. It was a Goodwill for $3.99 and the insert is about 8 by 10 and when you turn that frame over it said $30 from Hobby Lobby so still a pretty good deal. I'm going to be using these wooden beads that I got from the Dollar Tree. I will use most of them. I'm going to be using some of these small carrots. I got them at Hobby Lobby. I'm also going to be using one of these self-adhesive wall tiles that I got at the Dollar Tree. One of these wooden tags, mine came from Hobby Lobby at Christmas. These ribbons that I got from Hobby Lobby. Some jute twine. One of these wooden words that says Happy Easter. Some chalk paint by Waverly in the colors pumpkin, ivory, and truffle. And finally, some Elmer's glue and a tiny bit of hot glue. That's it. The first thing you want to do is clean up your frame because it did come from the thrift store. I'm going to remove this price, turn it over on the back. I'm going to take out the glass and the backing. Then I'm going to start working with that tile. I'm going to cut off two long sides and then cut off the two shorter ones, basically leaving that square in the middle for a future project. And then I'm coming in with my scissors and I'm going to detail cut off four corners and also those four middle pieces that were on the outside edge. And then I'm going to use E6000. I'll use a popsicle stick to spread the glue onto the back and I'm going to place on all of the corners and then I'll place in the four middle pieces. And you'll want to make sure everything is stuck down really nicely on those corner edges and also let it dry for quite some time. And then I'm going to come in with this brown Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to give it a thick coat all over and let it dry for several hours. And then I'm going to use a technique I've not used since the 90s and I'm going to come in with some Elmer's glue and I'm going to give it a good coat all over. I'm just doing the front on this step and don't let it dry. Come in immediately with your ivory paint and give it a pretty thick coat on the front. You can come back in a minute and do the edges inside and out. But I'm going to show you here drying it with my hand dryer. When it dries, it starts to crack. I couldn't do the entire thing like this because I didn't want to hit those plastic pieces, but y'all, it turned out great. For the Happy Easter, I just take my utility knife and I'm going to cut off the happy part. You have to be careful. It is kind of thick, but it's also fragile. And then I'm going to paint it with my Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. So to make our tassel, I'm going to first take one of these carrots. I tie some jute twine around the middle and then I just glue the other carrots to it. That's all there is. And then I'm going to come in and tie it to one end of my tassel. I'm just going to be using the beads in the natural color that they came in and I'm going to make sure one side is a little longer than the other side and I tie a piece of twine at the top in the middle so that I can attach it later. Then I'm going to take my tag, I'm going to glue on the word Easter using my hot glue and I'm going to write in 2023 with my orange marker right below that. And this is the part where I'm going to attach my tag to one end and my carrots to the other end. I'm just tying a couple of knots with the string that the beads came on. The last thing I'm going to do is make a very simple bow. I'm going to use first this orange ribbon. I'm making three inch loops on each side, two on each side, so a four loop bow. And then I'm coming in with my second ribbon and I'm just going to do one loop on each side, a little smaller than the first one. I'm using twine to tie around the bow. And once I finish, I'm going to wrap twine several times around the middle and tie it off. I'm going to use my drill to drill a pilot hole up at the top and then I'm going to come in with a really tiny screw eye and screw it down into the piece so that I can tie on my bow and my tassel. Then I just add a little hot glue for extra security and with that the piece is done. I really love how that cracking turned out y'all.
Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we are going to need a pattern of a bunny. I googled bunny outline and found one that I liked. I downloaded it, then I pulled it into a Word document and made it 26 inches tall. When I printed it, it took six prints to get it all. I cut it out and taped it together and that's how I got my pattern. Now I'll put a link to this pattern down below if you'd like to have a copy. And I really do think that 26 inches is a good height. We're also going to use some burlap. I have a yard from Hobby Lobby and I didn't even use half of it. This bunny tail from the Dollar Tree some pink burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree, some twine, some stuffing of some sort. I'm using this from an old pillow from Goodwill and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I did was fold my burlap in half so that I'm doing two at one time. Then I laid my pattern on top of it and I traced around it with my jot permanent marker. Now you don't have to use a permanent marker. You could use a pencil. This is what I had on hand. Then we are just going to cut it out and you're cutting both at the same time so that they are the same. I did have to cut inside my lines because I used that permanent marker and I didn't want any of it to show. Once you get it cut out, I'm just going to take little pieces of it and pull it back so that I can see the under layer. Then I'm going to use my hot glue and go right around the edges. You want to get it as close as you can to the edges and then make sure that it's pressed down really well. You can see that I grabbed my little silicone spatula thing there because this is porous fabric and this hot glue will come up through there and it will burn you. When you get to the bottom, you want to leave most of that open so that you can stuff this. You need to be able to get up into the ears so you're gonna need a good hole there at the bottom. We're just gonna go all the way around. Then we're gonna take our stuffing and start lightly stuffing our bunny. Now you don't want this to be really thick or really tight. You're just wanting to give it a 3D effect, kind of make it pop out. So you can see that I took my stuffing and I stick it up in there, then I kind of press it around until I get it flattened. And I did this until I had my whole bunny stuffed. Then once you're finished with that, I'm gonna take my glue gun and I'm gonna seal up that bottle, making sure that I push that stuffing up in as I go. Now I did use the stuffing from this pillow, but you could stuff this even with old garbage bags or your bags from Walmart. If you're gonna have this hanging outside, that would probably be the better option. Now we're going to add our little bunny tail. I had a time getting this little clip off here. You can see that I end up cutting a hole in my bunny tail, but that's okay because once you glue it on, it doesn't come out. We're gonna put a generous amount of glue on our little tail and then put it right in the center of our bunny. Now I'm just going to flip him over and I'm gonna make a hanger. I use a little piece of twine and a darning needle. I like the big eyes on this. We're gonna thread it through and then we're just gonna push it through our material there so that it comes in one side and goes out the other. You're gonna tie a knot in it and trim it off and this is gonna give you a loop for hanging. I wanted to give it a little bit of color, so I grabbed this pink burlap ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I figured out how big I wanted my bow to be and cut off a piece just for that. I'm gonna fold those tails over each other, then I pinch it up in the center, take my twine, wrap it around about three or four times, and tie it into a knot. We're gonna trim that off and fluff up our bow. Then we'll dovetail those ends just by cutting them at an angle, fold it in half and we'll use a little bit of hot glue to attach it to our ear. And once we do that, this project is finished. Hey y'all, this is Kay. I've gathered up a few materials, then we'll supplement it as we go along, but let's get crafting y'all. My thrifted item is a 2 before that I picked up on a curb alert in New Mexico. I have cut it into two 5.5 inch pieces and one 5 inch piece. 
I will be using some of these leftover wooden beads from a project last week. They came from the Dollar Tree in one strand. Also one of these wooden bunnies, I got this package at Hobby Lobby. Two of these place card holders, they come in the wedding department at Hobby Lobby. These almost four inch letters that I got at Hobby Lobby, they come two to a package. Some Waverly chalk paint in the colors Truffle and White, as well as some folk art chalk paint in the color Vintage Victorian, which is a very light pink. Some wired jute, I got mine at Hobby Lobby, but they also sell a version at the Dollar Tree. A small piece of burlap fabric, you don't need very much. Some ribbon roses, I got mine at Walmart. One of these small flat back eggs, I got them at a package at Hobby Lobby. This piece of cloth that I got at the Dollar Tree, they sell that where the automotive stuff is. I think it's for washing your car. Some ribbons in many shades of pink. I just pulled everything I had in my stash and I think I ended up using all of it. Some antiquing wax by Waverly. And finally, some school glue and some hot glue and a little bit of florals that I pulled at the end. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint my two by four pieces. I'm going to paint all six sides in the truffle chalk paint, and then you want to let it dry really well. For the two wooden letters, I'm going to stain them with the Waverly Wax. I'm going to use a paintbrush to spread it on, and then I just wipe off any excess with a paper towel. I'm going to paint six of the beads in the pink chalk paint, and then I will use four of them in their natural state. I will just place them on this wooden skewer and stick it into a piece of styrofoam and then just use my paintbrush. I'm going to cut off a piece of this fuzzy fabric big enough for my bunny and just use some hot glue to attach it down to the piece and then I'll use my detail scissors to cut it out. I'm going to use one of those eggs from Hobby Lobby in that package in pink for the bunny's tail. We'll attach it with some hot glue at the bottom and then use this little detail ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby and place a little flower right between the bunny's ears. My wood pieces are really dry so I'm going to come in with some glue, just some regular school glue, and I'm going to put on a light covering at first. You don't let it dry, you come in immediately with your white chalk paint and give it a nice thick coat. Then I come in with my hand dryer and I'm going to dry everything. And you can tell that I get kind of a light crackling effect. It's not a real heavy one and that's a nice look. But then I decided I'm going to try on the second side and I'm going to be a little more heavy handed with the glue. And once I get it on, I go ahead immediately spread on my paint and come in with my dryer and I get a much deeper crackled effect. And that's the effect I decided to use on this piece. So, so the amount of glue you use, it does matter as into the overall outcome. And I'm going to do the same thing to the two sides of the piece using the glue and the paint. And then when I finish and get that dried, I'm going to come in and just paint the top and bottom just in my white Waverly chalk paint. I didn't use the glue and I did the same thing to all six pieces. I'm going to use my precision tip glue gun and attach the H and P right in the center of the two tallest pieces of wood. And then I decided the bunny needed a little more depth, so I'm going to use this brown eyeshadow and just work my way around the sides of the bunny, smudging the edges. It just gave it more of an antique look and it fit in better with the rest of my pieces. Then I'll just glue it down to the center of the smallest piece, and that of course is our O. Now I'm going in with my drill and I'm going to drill a hole right in the center of the top of the two tallest pieces. And then we'll just string on our beads. We'll use three pink and two natural color. Use a little hot glue and place in our placeholder. I'm going to take my wire jute twine and I'm going to cut with my wire cutters two nine inch pieces. And then I will fold them into the shape of two bunny ears then I will cut off and remove about an inch from the bottom of the wire on both ends of both ears and then twist that wire together to make one straight piece. And then I just glue my fabric down so that it doesn't fray any further. Then I'm just going to cut off a piece of burlap that will be big enough for both of my bunny ears. And then I'll just come in with my Victorian pink chalk paint and I'm going to paint it just kind of sporadically, not a complete coverage onto the burlap fabric. 
Then I'll use my precision tip glue gun and I'll place some glue on the back of my jute and then I'll place it down onto the pink fabric. And then of course I'm going to come in and cut that out close to the edge with my scissor. I'm going to use my drill and place two holes in the top of my piece just a little bit apart. We can always manipulate those ears because they're wire. I'm going to place hot glue onto the wires so I can place them down into the holes that we made and let that set. The next thing I'm going to do is cut my pieces of ribbon into five inch strips and then we'll cross them on an X each color at a time. Secure it in the middle with a small piece of twine and then we'll trim up all of the edges cutting each of the pieces to the correct size. I'm going to use a little bit of this velvet ribbon around the middle to hide the jute. Then I'll just attach the bow to the center middle. And then once I do that, I'm going to add a few florals to the right and left just to give it a little more color. These florals originally came from Hobby Lobby. And now we'll just take some of those ribbon roses that I got from Walmart and I'll place them kind of towards the top and sticking up just a little bit on the top of the H and on the top of the P. And with that, our project is complete. This is one of my favorite ones that I have made to date for this Easter, y'all. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, we're going to use one of these egg ornaments from the Dollar Tree. You get two in a pack and I had already removed one. This pattern that I designed and printed out, I'll put a link to it in the description box below if you would like to have a copy. Some spackling from the Dollar Tree, some old blush, a couple of tumbling tower blocks, a pencil and a permanent marker, a microfiber towel from the auto section at Dollar Tree, some craft wire, some Waverly chalk paint in ballet slipper pink, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. The first thing I wanted to do was close in that hole at the top of this egg. Since it's not gonna be hanging, I didn't want it there. I'm gonna put some tape on the back, fill it in with spackling, and let it dry. Now that that's dry, I'm going to take my Waverly chalk paint in ballet slipper pink and I'm going to give it a good coat. We're going to cover over that area that we repaired and then I'm going to go ahead and paint the rest of the front, the sides, and the back. It's pretty close to the color that it already was, but I wanted everything to match. Once our paint is dry, I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm just gonna go in and highlight those ridges in the egg. This was supposed to make it look like wood and I liked that, so I wanted to highlight that and then I also distressed the edges. Now I'm gonna take some craft wire and I'm gonna form my ears. This is gonna go inside of the fabric. I wanted to make sure that my ears would stand up once I had put them on there. And I didn't want to use cardboard because I like the idea of being able to bend them and shape them to give them some personality. So I just grabbed some craft wire. I don't know the gauge of this. You want it thick enough that it's gonna hold its shape, but you also want it to be flexible enough that you can easily bend it. I take two little pieces and I form it around to make my ears and then I just twist up those bottles and trim it off. Now I'm gonna take my cloth and I fold up one end. I'm gonna use my ear pattern and cut out two little pieces of it. Then I'm going to open it up and use my wire with a little bit of hot glue and I'm gonna glue it right on top of one of the pieces. Put a little more hot glue to hold it in place. Then for the other piece, I'm gonna put hot glue all around those edges and I'll flip it over on top of it and sandwich it together. We're gonna to press it down really good and then trim up the fuzzies that are on the ends. For the other ear, we're gonna do it the same way. I'll cut out two pieces. Then I'm gonna glue my wire onto the top of one of my pieces with some hot glue. I'll put hot glue all around the edges of the other piece, and then I'm just going to sandwich these together, press it really well, and trim up those edges. 
For the feet, I actually did cut four pieces of this, but you really don't need it. You only need two pieces. I think that when you glue these together, it actually becomes too thick. Then I took my little hand and I cut out two pieces of it. For my ears, I'm gonna take my old blush and I'm just gonna fill in the insides of them. I wanna give it that pink hue that you relate to bunnies. I like using old makeup for this. You could use paint, but paint has a tendency to get hard and to me it looks clumpy and my makeup always stays soft and it looks natural. For the hands and feet, I'm gonna use a marker and just kind of define the little fingers and toes on there. And now I want to put my Happy Easter onto my sign. I'm going to use the method that y'all see us do all the time. I scribble on the back of this with a pencil. Then I flip it over and put it on my project where I want it to be. And I trace over it and this is going to transfer the letters onto my project. Once they're transferred on, I'm gonna use a marker and just fill those in. If you have a good handwriting or even a decent handwriting, this is such a simple, cute font that you could totally freehand this. Now we're going to put it together. I lay my ears out, then I put my little hands on the egg where I want them to be. I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue and secure each of my hands in place. Then I'll lift my egg and put some hot glue on the bottom of the ears and put the egg right back on and press it until it sets. We're gonna bend our ears up just a little bit, give him some personality. Then I'm gonna take my feet and I'm gonna glue my egg right on top of it. Now I had glued two of these together and you can see what I was talking about, that it's just too thick. I'm gonna trim off the back of this. Then I'm gonna take two of my tumbling tower blocks. I'm gonna glue those together. And then once I press them together, I'll put some glue on the back of that, stick it on the back bottom of my egg, and with that, this project will be finished. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using this bunny wreath form that I got from the Dollar Tree for $5. As a matter of fact, I'm going to be using two of them and I'm going to be making them slightly different. I'm going to be using this bunch of florals that I got at Hobby Lobby when it was 50% off. So it was about $7.50 for the bunch and I'm going to be sort of dividing them in half and using them on the two wreaths. And y'all know I'm a ribbon hoarder, so I went through all of my wired ribbons in pinks and greens and oranges and so forth that would match the florals that I bought. Some of them are two and a half inch, some are one and a half inch, and one of them is even one inch wide. And over time, these were purchased at Hobby Lobby, online, Michaels, and even at Old Time Pottery. I love my Easy Bow Maker and I'm going to be using it to make two different styles of bows for this particular project. And of course for this project we will be using two zip ties and two chenille stems and my wire cutters to make the bows. And I will also be using my Grace Monroe Home glue pot that I got from Surebonder. This is not a sponsored video, but they are running a sale right now. Sometimes I just like to buy a big bunch of flowers that have already been put together for you where they have different florals that complement each other. And so I bought these, as I said, from Hobby Lobby, and now I'm separating them and getting them ready to use. I'm going to push all of the leaves towards the bloom and then use my wire cutters. And at first I'm cutting mine at about eight inches or so, but later you will see me recut them till about four inches. So if you want to start out at four, go right ahead. And then I just sort of divide the bunches in half so that I have similar flowers on the two wreaths that I'm going to make. For the first bow for the first wreath, I'm going to be making what I believe is called a terry bow, and I chose these six ribbons. Do you have to have six? No, you can make a beautiful bow with just one ribbon. I'm going to be making six inch tails. I'm going to do four inch loops. And if you notice here, I'm going to do one tail up and one tail down 
and one loop up and one loop down. In other words, they're going to be opposites. They will be diagonally across from each other and that's why I slowed it down here for you to see. And then I'll cut again a six inch tail and this is how it's going to look on our Easy Bow Maker as we begin. And when we start the second color, I'm going to come in with this hot pink. It's about a two inch ribbon, I think. And I'm going to do the same thing, but now I have a loop on top of a tail and a tail on top of a loop. I hope that makes sense to you. And then we'll make sure everything's straight and then we're going to speed everything up. I'm going to come in with the next ribbon and with the third ribbon, I start making my loops just a tiny bit smaller than the ones before. And so my third and fourth ribbon are about the same size and so forth. That's kind of how I work my way across there until finally I'm putting on the one inch orange gingham ribbon. I'm going to come in with a zip tie get it started while it's on my bow maker, then I'll flip it over. And before I tighten it, I put a chenille stem right there in the back and then pull it tight and cut off the excess with my wire cutters. And then every bow needs a lot of fluffing, as you well know. You wanna pull those tails out to the bottom and the top and the same thing with the loops, you want to shape it. It's wire so you can pull on it quite a bit. Then we'll go in and dovetail the ends for the left side that we didn't finish and pretty much this is how our bow looks. Now I'm going to go ahead and place it right in the middle of the two ears here at the top because this bunny wreath I'm pretending is my girl bunny wreath if you will and I'll twist that chenille stem around the back. We'll use a little hot glue to secure it and cut off the excess. So now you'll see me start to place the florals on our wreath. For the one that I consider the girl, I'm going to start out with the larger of the pink roses, and then I cut my stems at about four inches, dip it into my glue pot, and I bent that stem so that I can slide it upwards into the wreath form, and I'll have lots of glue to keep it nice and attached. And you can see that I'm going to go in to the left side and do the same thing with the same type flower. You can use as little florals as you want or as much as you want. And I did place quite a few on this wreath. And after that, I decided I would not place in the carrots I had planned to place because it was a nice full wreath and I did want the green moss to still show. I'm placing in the orange flowers and then finally on these last ones that hang down and have some nice greenery to them. And with that, this project is pretty much complete. I love how it turned out, but it's very simple. For the second bow for our second wreath, I used seven different ribbons. And you can call me out on that. That is a lot of ribbons to use on a project, but I just wanted to try them all. I'm going to be making, I think, what is called a Lisa bow this time. I'm going to be making eight inch tails and four inch loops. And I just bring my tails straight down to the bottom. And for the second ribbon, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to make four inch loops and eight inch tails. But when I start my third and fourth ribbon, I make them slightly smaller than the first two. And that's how I work my way down till I finish all of my ribbons. I have two the same, then I start two smaller, and then I start the process again. And yes, I did use a lot of ribbon. You do not have to do this. I just wanted to see how much color I could get into this wreath. Now I'm going to take a zip tie, bring it across and start tightening it. And then I will turn the bow over, take a chenille stem, place it into the back, pull everything snug and cut off the excess with my wire cutters. And then every bow, as I always say, needs a lot of fluffing. And when you have this much ribbon, that's a lot of fluffing to do. And once you get it kind of like you want it, because you're going to have to fluff it again when you get it on the wreath, I start cutting my tails and I do allow them to graduate in size, being longer on the bottom and shorter towards the top. And I do fold each one in half and dovetail the ends. And with that, that's how our bow looks. And we're going to go ahead and attach it to our wreath and I'm going to attach it in the middle of the bottom. This will be kind of like the boy part of my wreath. Since one, I'm 
calling a female and one a male. And once we twist it around, we turn it onto the bag, secure it with some hot glue, cut off the excess, and then I did apply a little more hot glue to make sure it stayed flat. You, you can also poke those chenille stems down into the wreath form. And this is how they both looked at the beginning of this project. Now I'm going to start putting the florals into my wreath and I'm going to use some larger orange roses than I used on the first project. So I'm going to begin with them because they're the largest of the bunch that is left. And I'm going to place one to the right. I'm cutting the stems again at four inches, bending them slightly and dipping them down into my glue skillet. And that keeps them nice and secure on this wreath. And I just make sure that I have plenty of stem going into the wreath and not through the wreath form. And I start now with the pink ones on the right and the left. And I just decorate them symmetrically, I guess you would say. And it just makes things look nice and even and easy to do. You can also use a variety of florals and mix it all up. It really depends on your personal taste and style. And we'll finish off with these green floral pieces at the end. And with that, our male part of this project is pretty much complete. And I'm going to place these bunnies both on my front doors because I happen to have double front doors. Happy Easter, y'all. We'll be here before we know it. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For this project, I'm going to use this paper mache egg that I picked up from Goodwill Outlet for 29 cent. Now, I remember seeing these at Hobby Lobby last year. I think it was Hobby Lobby. So if you're interested in this project, check the Easter section at Hobby Lobby. Some twine, some crochet ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree, some of these small flowers off this garland that I got from Timu, a candle holder that I picked up from the thrift store last year. I've had it in my stash. Some greenery from the Dollar Tree and my glue gun and some glue sticks. I decided that I wanted to cover my egg with twine. And the best way to do that is to start your coil in your fingers. You're gonna put a little bit of your hot glue on the end of the twine and then just start turning it in a circle. And that way it's going to wind up tightly. I just kept adding a little bit of glue and turning it until I got a piece that was big enough to work with. Then I'm just going to use some hot glue and attach it to the top of my egg. Now we can just keep going around, adding a little bit of glue and turning it and twisting our twine until we get it covered. Now I am going to warn you to be really careful with this. You could easily burn yourself really badly with this hot glue. My gun was not turned up on the high setting so my glue was not really hot. When you see me pull my fingers away and rub them together it's because they were getting glue on them and it was bothering me so I was just wiping it off. I was not burned. Now this took me probably about 45 minutes to completely cover my egg. I would suggest that you put on your favorite crafter, just kind of relax into it and it will go by before you know it. Once you get to the end, you're just going to keep twisting it in until it closes up. Then we're going to trim off our twine and use just a little bit more glue to attach it down. Now I did have globs where it kind of seeped out between my twine. So I grabbed my heat gun and this melts it down and you can't see it. Now if you don't have a heat gun, you could also use a lighter. This twine also had those little hairs on it and this burns those off and gives it a more finished look. It does have a few charred areas, but you can use your hands and kind of wipe those off. Now I'm going to take my crocheted ribbon and I'm going to glue it around the center of my egg. I wasn't worried about it being exactly in the center. Um, I just kind of eyeballed it. And then I'm going to use the hot glue to attach it all the way around. Now again, be careful. This is open work um, lace and it can burn you if you're not careful. 
once I got my lace all glued down, I'm going to come back with some of those flowers off of that little garland that I got from Timu and glue those right over that seam and then one up and one down. This is just going to give it a little bit of decoration. Now, if you don't have one of these little garlands, they have some of the cutest miniature roses at Hobby Lobby that you could use for this as well. Or they have some really pretty flowers at the Dollar Tree. I did have to cut off that little piece sticking on the back really close so that I was able Able to glue it down now once I got my flowers on there I wanted a little more greenery I just thought that it needed a little bit so I grabbed one of those little bushes from the Dollar Tree and I cut some pieces off and I glued a couple pieces going up and a couple pieces going down and I thought this just kind of finished it up and made it look really fresh now I did want to put my egg on this little stand but it's not going to stand up by itself so I grabbed this little garland that I had I think I got this from Hobby Lobby last year at the end of season and I just kind of twisted it around and I used a little bit of glue to hold it now you could also use the twine covered wire that they have at the Dollar Tree for this as well I'm going to glue that little circle onto my stand and add my egg and this project is complete y'all it's Kay. For this project I'm going to be using one of these wooden rails that I got at the Dollar Tree. Some green deco mesh that I also got from the Dollar Tree. This faux fur four inch wide ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby at Christmas. Some plastic eggs that I got from Hobby Lobby. I got mine when they were 90% off last year and they have ribbons on the end of each egg. I'm going to be using some white Waverly chalk paint. I'm also going to be using several chenille stems, some hot glue, and just a few embellishments from my stash to include some carrots from the Dollar Tree. The first thing I'm going to do is paint my bunny in white Waverly chalk paint on the front and the back. I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. Because it's going to be on a porch, I need to make sure that it's going to be able to withstand the weather. And also, this wood is kind of thin and that will give it just a little more support. Once everything is dry, I'm going in with some E6000 and I'm going to totally cover what's going to be the front of my bunny. And then I'm going to come in with that four inch wide faux fur ribbon and cover it. And then we'll just set that aside to dry really well. Then I'm going to use my tiny detail scissors and I'm going to cut it out, but you want to turn it onto the back and cut just the fabric, not the fur. And then you can always trim the fur if it hangs over too far. And I also went out just a little bit beside the bunny. I didn't cut it exactly beside him. I'm going to use one of these small ranunculus for my stash and I'm going to glue it right down to the bottom of the bunny to sort of give him a tail. And then I'm just going to take this pink gingham ribbon. It's kind of thin. I'm going to make a simple loopy bow, tie another piece of ribbon around the center, give it a little fluff and cut off the ends and I'll attach it right between the ears. And now we're going to start assembling the part for our rails. My idea was to use the green so it looks like Easter grass. And I'm going to come in with some green chenille stems and I'm going to place first one at each end across the center bar and we'll twist those down tight. Then I'll come back and place one in between each of those, so two at the bottom rail. So we'll have five total. I'm cutting the mesh at 15 inches long. I'm using my rotary cutter and you will need 10 pieces. I'm going to do very simple procedure here. I'm going to lay the mesh down kind of backwards, if you will, and I'm going to roll it against itself. I just kind of scrunch it in the middle and make it look kind of like a butterfly, bring it over to my chenille stems, and then I'm going to tighten them down onto the mesh. Real simple. It looked a little sparse with one piece, so that's why I decided to come back and put another piece into each of the chenille stems so that it would have two pieces. The Dollar Tree mesh is good value, but it is kind of thin, so often you do have to use more. 
And now I'm coming in with those eggs and I'm going to place them on every other one. I should have chosen brighter colors, so you might want to do that when you do yours, but I just put them down onto the string they were on, twisted them into the chenille stems, and I used a little hot glue for extra security. Now I'm going to come in and cut off my chenille stems. I'm just using my wire cutters. I'm going to use a little piece of ribbon here at the back so that I can hang my piece. It's not very heavy. Just placing it on with hot glue. And the final thing to do is to add some carrots on those last two chenille stems. And that way the green is totally hidden and we look like we have some Easter grass with just some eggs and carrots. And I had one little tiny carrot in my stash that I placed on the bow at the top. And with that, this project is complete. y'all it's Trish. For this project I'm going to use this wood blend wreath that I got from the Dollar Tree, this little bunny statue that I got from the thrift store for 99 cent, some assorted florals. I got these from the Dollar Tree, Dollar General, and Walmart. We'll just pick through them and decide which ones we want to use some self-adhesive moss mat. I got mine from Walmart. You can also get this from Hobby Lobby. A piece of floral foam, some assorted greenery and flower pieces that I had left over from other projects. I just throw them in this clear box and then I pick through them when I need small pieces. Some twine. I got mine from the Dollar Tree. Some ribbon of choice. I'm using this pink burlap ribbon from the Dollar Tree and then some sheer ribbon to tie it up with. Some fix-all adhesive and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I'm going to do is add a hanger to my wreath. I just take a piece of twine, loop it over, and tie a knot. Then I'm going to put it at the top of my wreath just by pushing it up under some of these pieces of this wood. And then I pull it through the loop and that gives me a hanger. This is going to keep me knowing where the top of this wreath is. Now I'm going to take a piece of my floral foam and I cut off a small piece that I'm going to use as a base for my little bunnies. I thought I was going to glue this on using my fix-all adhesive, but I will soon find out it takes more than that. Now we're going to cut down some of our adhesive moss. I like this better than the moss you get from the Dollar Tree. It's so much less messy. Now you can see when I pick this up that foam fell off. So I grabbed my hot glue gun and I glued it down and it stuck temporarily. Now I'm going to take the back off of my moss and I'm going to wrap it around my foam. I just want to cover it so that if you see anything, it actually looks like grass and not like the floral foam. Now when I go to put this last piece on, the whole thing comes off in my hand. At this point, I realized I probably needed to add something to the wreath that this could hold on to. So I grabbed some big burlap ribbon that I had on hand and I just wrap it around there and glue it down. And this is going to give me something to stick my floral foam onto. Now that I have that glued down, I can put some more of my fix all adhesive on there and some hot glue. And now this sticks just like I wanted it to. Now we can start adding our greenery and our florals to our wreath. Now this is entirely to taste. I like using these kind of wreaths. This one isn't a grapevine wreath, but it's along that same line where you can just stick your greenery and your florals down in between the pieces and with a little bit of hot glue it will stay. Now I did use a small piece of wire to bend that one piece up the way I wanted it to but other than that I just take small pieces and I stick them down in there. Sometimes I use some hot glue if it doesn't want to stay and I just fill it in until I like how it looks. Now for the most part I used pieces I had left over 
leftover from other projects. I liked these small pieces of flowers, but when I ran out of those, I did just start cutting off some pieces from other floral picks that I had and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. If you don't like how it looks then just pull it out and put another piece in there and you're just going to keep adding until you're happy with how it looks. Now I did want to have a piece that come across the top just to give it a little bit of color so I took this long piece that I got from the Dollar Tree and I kind of wove it in between those pieces of wood and I loved how that looked. Then I stuck another piece down come in from the bottom going up. I want to add a bow to my wreath so I'm going to use this pink burlap ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree and I just make two loops, cut it off, leaving some tails and then I pinch it up in the center and I take my smaller ribbon wrap around it about three times and tie it into a double knot. We'll trim off those tails and that gives me a simple little bow. I like making these, they're really easy to make and they always turn out really pretty. Now, of course, I love to dovetail my ends. That just means that I fold them and cut them at an angle. And then I held it up to see how I liked it and I realized I could still see that burlap. So I decided to take some more of my little greenery pieces and just glue them at the bottom of that um, foam and that covered up the burlap and I couldn't see it anymore. That was just a personal preference. Now I'll use some hot glue to attach my bow on there and the last thing I need to do is attach my bunnies. We'll add quite a bit of glue to the bottom, stick them down to the base and with that, this little spring wreath is complete. It's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these $10 bunnies that's about 17 inches tall that I got at Walmart recently. These are all the rage on the internet right now and on TikTok. So you know I had to buy mine in pink, and they do come in several different colors. They have a fuzzy, kind of furry texture, but really cute and made of styrofoam. I'm going to be using some of this ranunculus including the greenery that is on the stalks. I got these at Walmart. I will also use a little white baby's breath that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to be using some one and a half inch wired ribbon. The hot pink one came from Michael's. The one on the right came from Hobby Lobby in the Christmas section. Also, I'm going to be using this white pink and I think it came from Hobby Lobby as well. You will need some floral wire and some wire cutters. And also I'm going to be using my Bow Dabra to make this bow. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually make the bow. So I'm going to take my bow dabra, a piece of my floral wire, and I'm going to place it right down through the middle slats here, if you will. I only have about 20 inches of this hot pink ribbon. So I'm going to go ahead and dovetail the ends and then I will fold it in half. I love when you get to use every bit of the ribbon on your roll and you don't waste any of it. Then I'm just going to pinch that in that middle and kind of pleat it a little bit, place it down into my bow dabra, the back side facing up so that we have the right side facing out when we go in and fold each side over to make our loops for the bow. And then for the next two ribbons, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to cut though 22 inches long because that's the length I originally wanted. So we'll cut those ribbons, fold them in half and dovetail the ends. I love how the Bow Dabra holds everything for you. If you have hand problems, you don't have to worry about that. It will hold it nice and tight till you get finished and want to stack your ribbons. Also notice on this last piece, I'm going to use two of the plaid ribbon. Once we're finished, I'm going to pull up that wire to the top and tighten it around my bow. I'm not going to cut off the wire at this point because I'm going to use it to attach it to the bunny. I also tied another ribbon around the middle to hide the wire and then we'll just glue that down. 
I'm going to give the bow a good fluffing, but I also fluff it again once I get it on the bunny. And then I'm going to attach it again with the wire right into the ribbon that was already around the bunny's neck. I do use a little glue to keep it from sliding. And then I found this egg that came from Hobby Lobby when they were 90% off last year. And I'm going to attach it right here in the middle as well to give a little more pink. We'll cut off that ribbon that came on the bunny at an angle so it looks more professional. Now I'm going to go in with my ranunculus. I chose some of the smaller flowers. I'm going to cut them really close on the back so I do use a little more hot glue on the back to make sure my ranunculus doesn't come apart once I start using it. I glued the larger darker one right in the center of the ears and the smaller lighter ones to the right and the left. And I'm going to cut off some of that greenery that came in the ranunculus bunch and I'm going to attach two small pieces on the right and the left. Honestly, I probably should have attached my greenery before my roses, but since they were heavier, I wanted them to be attached right down to the fur. But you might want to do that. Now I'm going to cut off just a few pieces of the white baby's breath that came from the Dollar Tree and we'll glue a couple of sprigs on either side of the flower. And that's pretty much it for this project. I kept it pretty simple, but it looks great with all my pieces I've crafted this year. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.